Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to implement OAuth 2 in our Spring Boot application using GitHub as a provider. In previous video, we have already created one OAuth app in GitHub. If you have not yet created and wants to understand how to create it, please watch the previous video before continuing. We will demonstrate login via GitHub in this video and execute various scenarios to understand how it works. We will also see what happens if we revoke all the tokens. I have the application ready to save some time. So we will walk through every part of the application from the configuration files to HTML templates explaining how they work together. I had started creating this application using simple command line. If you also want to create an empty Spring Boot application, you can simply open PowerShell in Windows and type in this command. Here we are invoking a web request to Spring Initializer and passing the name of the project, dependencies that we want, in our case which will be the web dependency and the type of project which is Maven in our case. The option of out file is used to save the output of web request in a specific file like we are saving it in OAuth2 demo zip. To create a Spring Boot application using terminal in Mac OS or Linux, you can simply use curl command which is commonly available in all Unix based systems. This command sends a request to Spring Initializer similar to the PowerShell command to generate the project with specific parameters. Now let's kick things off with pom.xml. pom.xml is where our Maven project gets its configuration and dependencies. Under dependencies, we have added few key components. The first one is Spring Boot Starter Web Dependency. It brings in everything we need to build a web application. This will help us creating endpoints, managing model in controller classes. Another important dependency is Spring Boot Starter OAuth2 Client. This dependency is essential for working with OAuth2. It provides the necessary tools to authenticate user through OAuth providers like GitHub. Like we had discussed about callback URL in our previous video, all that functionality will be provided in this particular starter dependency. Now we also want to have some front end which will interact with these endpoints and populate the model data. For that we will be using a template engine, Spring Boot Starter Thymeleaf. It is the dependency which will allow us to render HTML templates. Other than that we have also added some test dependencies and few web related dependencies for UI. Now let's move to the application.yaml. In this particular file, we configure our application related settings. In this file, we set up OAuth2 client configuration. We provide the client ID and client secret for our GitHub application, which we obtain from the GitHub developer settings. These details we had generated during the OAuth app creation in our previous video. That is why I was emphasizing on creating a GitHub application. If you still do not have created one, please pause the video and watch the previous video to create your own OAuth application using GitHub so that you can use the client ID and secret generated in your application. We also specify the scope of the access. Here we are using read user which allows us to read the basic user profile information. This simple configuration sets up our application to interact with GitHub securely. Now let us dive into the heart of our security setup which is security config class. In this configuration class, we use at the rate configuration and at the rate enable security annotations to define our security behavior. The security filter chain bean we create is responsible for specifying which endpoints require authentication and which can be accessed without any authentication. In this, we permit the access of specific paths such as slash login and slash logout and also allow access to some static resources like CSS and JavaScript files. This means user can navigate to these pages freely while all other requires authentication. Next, we set up the OAuth2 login process. Here we specify our custom login page and the default success URL where user will be redirected after a successful login. And if login fails, we redirect the user to an error page to inform them about the issue. For the logout process, we set up an endpoint that invalidates the user session and clears any authentication information, ensuring that users are fully logged out. Now let us look at the controller, mycontroller.java, which handles our web request and user interactions. 
This class is annotated with at the rate controller, indicating that it will serve as a Spring MVC controller. We have defined several methods that correspond to different endpoints of our application. Let us discuss them one by one. First is slash home endpoint. It retrieves the authenticated user details using at the rate authentication principle annotation to access the OAuth2 user object. If the user is authenticated and try to access slash home, then this object of OAuth2 user will have user details similar to the principle in Spring Security. We extract the user attributes like their username, profile link and repositories. This information is added to the model and passed to the home.html view. Second endpoint is slash login. It first checks if the user is already authenticated and then redirect them to the home page. Otherwise, we are returning a login view. This check ensures users who are already logged in don't see the login page again. After login, we have also defined an endpoint to log out the user and clear the context. For that, we have slash logout. It logs out the user and invalidates their session, returning them to the logout.html view. Now, it is possible that during login request processing, some error happened. So, to handle that and display the error details in a consistent manner, we have another endpoint which is slash error. It retrieves any error details and present them to the user which is essential for diagnosing the issue. Now, only the UI components are left. The first page users see when they attempt to login is rendered by login.html. It contains a button that directs them to the GitHub authorization page. Upon successful login, users are redirected to home.html page. This page welcomes them and displays their GitHub username, profile link and link to the list of their repositories. Now, after the user is done with their activities in the application and wants to log out, they can click on logout button available in home.html. After logging out, user lands on this page, which confirms that they have been successfully logged out. It provides a clear button to log in again, creating a smooth transition. In case something goes wrong during the login process, this page informs user that the error has occurred. It provides error details and link to go back to the login page. These templates work together to create a smooth user experience guiding users through the authentication process. Now let us start our Spring Boot application and try to access slash login endpoint. Now before I initiate the login, let me open my GitHub app as well. Here you can see the number of users is currently zero. We will demonstrate login via GitHub from some other account and then verify the number of users here. Also, we will test after the user permitted GitHub app the access, then relogin will no longer require user to authorize the app again. It will directly get the user token. We will also see what happens if we revoke all the tokens. So let us begin with accessing slash login. Here we have this login button which will initiate the login via GitHub. This will take us to the GitHub authentication page. If you are not logged in, then it will ask you for your username and password of GitHub. On successful authentication, it will open an authorization page where we can see the application wishit.com trying to access your profile details. This page also gives you the detail of who is the owner of wishit.com application and your GitHub username which wishit.com is trying to access. Now let us click on authorize button. It will send back the authorization code to the callback URL, which our application internally exchanges for the access token. After all this, using the access token, our application will fetch user details and display on home page. This is the GitHub username of user who has permitted wishit.com to access the details. Then we have a hyperlink to GitHub profile. Let us click on this and open it in a new tab. So here you can see the profile page of GitHub user which is logged in. We have also printed a link to the repositories created by this user. If we access this link, it will give us a response in JSON format. Here you can see in our OAuth app token is issued and permitted to one user. Earlier it was zero users. Now let us test another scenario where we will first log out and try to log in again. On clicking logout button, 
it has navigated to the logout page. Now here, if I try to access slash home page, it will not navigate to home page. Rather, it will redirect us to the login page because we have already invalidated the session and cleared the security context. Now let us try and login again. Our expectation is it should not ask us again to authorize wishit.com because we have already authorized it previously. Here you can see clicking login via GitHub, we are directly redirected to our homepage after authenticating in the background. If I log out of github.com in the browser, it will just ask me to re-login using my GitHub username and password, but will not require me to authorize wishit.com again. Now the last scenario, we have an option to revoke user access tokens in our OAuth application in GitHub. Let me revoke it and then try to re-login. Now here you can see it is asking me again to authorize wishit.com to access my GitHub application. So this is how we have more control over who can access this functionality which makes our application more manageable and secure. So that was the complete code and demo of OAuth implementation in our Spring Boot application using GitHub as a provider. In similar way, we can generate client ID and secrets from other providers like Google or Facebook. But the cool part is you do not have to change any logic implementation in your application. You just need to add the appropriate property in your YAML with the details. Now this complete code is available in my GitHub repository. I have already provided the link in description. You can go ahead and check it out. I hope this video was helpful. If you have learned something today, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also press the bell icon so that you won't miss any new video update. Your feedback is very important to me. Let me know if there are any shortcomings or how can I improve the content more. Let me know if you want me to cover any specific topic which is related to either Spring Security or any other technology. Please let me know all that detail in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, happy coding.